You are most likely missing out on so much performance and you don't even know guys. As an example, we have two identical RAMs, right? 32 gigs, CL16, but one is set to 3000 megahertz and one is set to 2400. You might think, ah, it doesn't make too much of a difference, right? So many people don't have their RAM running on the maximum speed and this is how much you're losing literally. You have bandwidth and latency. Latency is the most important factor for Fortnite, I would say, and bandwidth is for video editing, also kind of for gaming and overall usage of the PC. For 3000 megahertz, we have a total bandwidth of 48 gigs per second. For 2400, we have 38.4. You're already missing out on 20 25% in bandwidth. And now for the latency, you basically calculate CL16 times 1000 through 3000 megahertz times 2, which comes down to a total of 2.67 nanoseconds for all 16 cycles. This is by the way what CL stands for on your RAM. It always shows you how many cycles your RAM kind of needs to process data whenever it gets like the command from the RAM controller and then working through whatever you're doing right now on your PC. And if you're only running 2400 megahertz, you're already on 3.3 nanoseconds. You might think right now that doesn't sound like a lot, but you're literally missing out on one fifth of your performance just because you're too lazy or you don't even check your XMP profile. Guys, you are paying so much money for RAM and you're missing out on one fifth of your performance. And the higher you go with RAM, the worse it's gonna get. I've seen people with 7200, 7600 megahertz RAM and they're only running it on 5600. You're literally missing out on so much performance and especially the latest is super important to keep consistent FPS. And literally all you gotta do is restart your PC, go into the BIOS, search up for XMP and put it to Profile 1. Most of the time Profile 1 already has all the presets and automatically enables the highest megahertz or just simply Google it up. I sadly can't give you all of the infos about this because every single BIOS looks different. If you use Asus, Gigabyte, whatever, SROC, they all have different BIOSes. Next up what's also super important is guys, so many people on their CPU have so many processors. I've seen people with two, three hundred of them and they're wondering why their overall system render latency is so bad. You have like 200 processors running in the background, you want to keep this as low as possible. Like I'm gonna give you an example, I have 70 processors with OBS running and my Go XLR, you know, for my audio and all of that stuff. Usually I get under 60 processors when I'm not recording on this PC. I made a full detailed video showing you exactly step by step how to reduce your processors. It's literally a complete guide, you can't mess up anything. Also super important guys, in your system tray don't have many applications running here. How you check this? Task manager, go into startup, make sure to disable as many as you can guys. As an example, I had your Java update schedule actually turned on because I just recently installed Minecraft, but it doesn't mean that it has to run every single time. Xbox App Service and all of that, Microsoft Edge, Epic Games, AMD, this one here, the noise suppression thing, which anyways no one really uses. Make sure to disable as many as possible. Next up, apps and features. Make sure to go through this whole entire list and uninstall everything which you don't need. You don't need Skype or all of these here. Theoretically not even calculator, then we have some other stuff here. Make sure to also uninstall all tools which you never use. There's usually so much bloatware actually on Windows pre-installed. Go through it and make sure to uninstall as many as you can. Next up guys, your power plan is also super important. For me, I use the Bitsim highest performance one. So many people plan balanced. Don't do that guys. Bitsim is so good literally. Link to it in the video description. Go into main in the first place. Make sure to go under active power profile, set it to Bitsim, pro balance enabled, performance mode enabled. Then you're gonna go over to options, general. Make sure to go under refresh interval GUI. Put this one here to five seconds. The same as well with interval governor. This one you're also gonna put to five seconds. Now you're going to launch whatever game you wanna run in the background. I'm gonna give you now an example on OBS since I don't have a game running. Go under CPU priority, always put it to high. Then we have INO priority, always also put it to high. Then power profile, then power profile. Make sure to put it on Bitsim highest performance one. As mentioned, just pretend that this is the Fortnite Exa. And then finally also CPU Affinity guys. And in here, I wanna tell you something. For AMD, you wanna make sure to actually disable SMT. This gives AMD users a huge performance increase. For you on Intel, this is called hyperthreading. And hyperthreading, you could theoretically say that most games actually benefit if you disable hyperthreading, but it only makes sense if you're running eight cores or above. If you're on six cores, you have to try it out again. If you're on four cores, always enable hyperthreading. I'm gonna give you a quick example. If you go here actually under my CPU, you can see that I have eight cores and 16 logical processors, which means eight real ones and eight of them, which are simply calculations on my CPU. They're virtual. But what we have as a problem is, if we actually take a look here at Affinity, all of them are checked and most games are just simply using the first eight. 
And the issue which we now have, we have a real one, we have a fake one, we have a real one, we have a fake one. So what you want to do is, with disabling hyperthreading or SMT on AMD, that you force your game to basically use the real ones. As mentioned, on AMD, turning off SMT can help you a ton out, guys. Make sure that you have a model which is maybe a little bit newer, I would say like Ryzen, third generation or something like that. There definitely, before you have to try it out as well. But on Intel 100%, as mentioned, if you have eight cores or above, make sure to turn it off and test it out in multiple games. Of course, there are some applications which still benefit from hyper-threading or some games. If you have like a huge large-scale open-world single-player game, then of course again turn it on. But for Fortnite as an example, you have to try it out yourself. Just make sure to run a game maybe with disabling hyper-threading and then run another game where you have hyper-threading and then just look at the average FPS. In general, most games profit from this because you're avoiding thermal throttling, you're avoiding your CPU basically working over time, causing also additional latency, and everything is also getting processed in the background. But until the CPU affinity step, I use everything which I just showed you previously and you're gonna be good to go. Just simply minimize it, process lesser is then gonna run the background actively, doesn't cost money or anything like that, then just simply go into your power plan and make sure that bits and highest performance one is selected. I've also seen from one of my latest polls that actually most of you guys have Nvidia, so therefore you're gonna need NVclean install because you need to reinstall your current driver without all the bloatware. Link to it as mentioned in the video description, and what you want to do is click here under manually select driver, go for the latest version, or you could also try to figure out which driver specifically works the best for you. I made a whole video about this, check it out afterwards. But let's say you want to go with the latest version. Make sure that you selected it, go into next. And now you can see we have a bunch of stuff here which usually gets installed automatically if you use normal Nvidia app or GeForce Experience and all of that stuff. And actually we only need display driver required. You could also click under recommended. I would recommend you to uncheck HD audio via HDMI, unless you're trying to plug your PC into a TV or you need like audio from the monitor to itself. Other than that, only physics X should be checked and the rest guys you can completely leave unchecked. Shadow play, telemetry, envy container, shield streaming service and all of that stuff. Don't need it. Click on the next. Next up under installation tweaks, make sure to disable install of telemetry, perform clean install, disable multiple overlay and disable Ansel, show export tweaks, disable telemetry, disable Nvidia HD audio, enable the MSI mode, just simply put it under high, disable this service here, this is basically a super old one which you don't need anymore, it's just to prevent you from basically making a copy of movies, that's what it was intended years ago, and then click under next, and now just simply click on install and continue. Now you've fully deep loaded your Nvidia driver, amazing, as mentioned if you want to test out specifically which of your drivers is the best for maximum FPS and least amount of latency. I made a whole entire benchmark guide showing you everything, check it out afterwards. Next up we're also going to switch up device manager. Once we're now in here, what you want to look for is under system devices actually the high precision event timer and this one you want to disable. Just simply click under yes, make sure that's disabled and you're already good to go. Extra steps which I could also give you guys is make sure that you actually unplug as many devices as you can from your PC, don't use multiple monitors, results in much higher latency, especially if you're gaming, competitive and all of that stuff guys only use one single monitor. If you need it for streaming and stuff like that, I can totally understand that, but for the best performance, only use one monitor. The same as well with multiple USB devices, which you don't need. So many people have like a secondary keyboard just for aesthetics, make sure to unplug it and all of that stuff. Also make sure to check out the two videos which are right on your own screen, where I show you how to fully optimize Windows 11 or also how to get Atlas OS, which is a custom gaming OS, which works perfect.